Welcome back to Inspiring Builds. I'm Dan, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a DIY pallet bar. I completed the build in less than a day, and it was a big hit for all ages at a grad party. Any pallets will work, free is best, and I use these from an oversized shipment. Use pallets with a HT stamp, meaning they are the safest and heat treated to eliminate parasites and insects. I wanted the final height to be 46 inches, so I cut off one section at 45 and a quarter inch. Circular saws used to be one of my least favorite tools until I got this Milwaukee one. It's been a game changer, has power like a corded one, and the battery lasts a long time. I'll provide a link to it along with all the tools used in the description below. If you're new here, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any of these tutorials. A circular saw will make quick work cutting a pallet, but does not cut deep enough to go all the way through the stringers requiring the pallet to be flipped over. In my pallet backdrop video, I showed how fast a reciprocating saw can break down a pallet. I'll show a few techniques throughout the video on how to break down a pallet without damaging the deck boards. Removing the deck boards from the middle stringers are the toughest. One technique is to use four 2x4s, and these are cut at 12 inches but doesn't need to be exact. In addition, I use a 4 pound hammer. Place one 2x4 in front of the deck board and one behind it. With this pallet having very narrow openings, I placed it on the bottom deck board and had to rip down the 2x4 to fit. Typically, the opening between slats are wide enough to avoid having to do this. Place the third 2x4 spanning across the first two and it should be a tight fit. You will use the last 2x4 to place on the stringer and hit it with the hammer loosening the deck board from the stringer. Once complete, you will have a gap as shown that will allow enough room to easily get the reciprocating saw underneath and remove the deck board quickly with minimum effort. Using a reciprocating saw makes the cut flush on the underneath side and allows for a rustic look keeping the nail heads in. This layout square is a go-to that I will link below that will easily transfer layout lines from one surface to another and in this example from the side to the top of each stringer. After marking each stringer, finish the cut all the way through each stringer with a circular saw. Stand up the pallet and move it in the preferred install location as this will be the front of the pallet bar. If the yard is not level such as this one with trees close by, plan on the sides of the pallet bar when positioning the front. I only plan to keep this up for the weekend, so I used a scrap tree to 2x4 I had on hand that was a short section I ripped down to make two stakes so the bar would be sturdy. Use a longer section for a permanent install. With working solo and holding the pallet with one hand in position, I used scrap cuts as markers to place where the stakes would go. This allowed me to move the pallet out of the way, remove the marker, and hammer in the stakes. This is tough clay and referenced to Stone City, so even a four pound hammer is tough to drive in the stakes. Once both stakes are driven in and sturdy, Place the pallet over the stakes. These Starhead multi-purpose screws are awesome for a fast bite, doesn't strip and counter sinks without an additional step. I installed four two inch screws on each side. It's not going anywhere and will be even more sturdy once the sides are installed. Measure the pallet openings on the top and each side was right at 25 inches. A 2x4 will be installed like this for support for the top of the bar. I made my mark at 26 and a half inches to account for the distance from the fence to the blade of the saw so I could put my square right on the mark and it would be exactly 25 inches. These sawhorses includes clamps, which is like an extra set of hands. 
Do a dry fit and then use two two inch screws on each end to install the two by fours. I prefer to get the screws started first. This allows me to have a solid grip on the 2x4 with one hand while using the other to screw in the screws the rest of the way for a flush install. Take the deck board that was removed earlier to shorten the pallet and clamp it down. Use three 2 inch screws on each side to secure it into the 2x4s. The sides of the pallet bar need to be the same height as the front. I used a circular saw to make a cut at 45 and a quarter inches. Flip the pallet over and transfer the cut mark from the side to the top of the stretchers and then finish the cut all the way through with a circular saw. The top of the pallet will be used as a shelf later on so it was not dismantled as shown on the first pallet. For the length of the sides, I first measured the width of the front of the pallet at 5 inches. I measured the distance from each side of the pallet to the outside of the stringer and it was roughly 28 inches. Since stringers are not perfectly even, I gave myself some room and marked the length at 33 and a half inches. Mark the cut line with a square and then hold the square next to the fence of the circular saw for a straight cut. I did realize I messed up immediately, which can easily be fixed as this is the back of the pallet and these cuts should be flush against the stringer. Flip the pallet on the front and let's try this again by measuring 33 and a half inches over. Grab a straight edge. I find that still, plywood, and MDF are all good options and clamp it down. Note, I did make a second mark one and a half inches over and clamped on this line. As you can see here, the distance from the fence to the saw blade is one and a half inches. I talked about the power of this saw earlier, and in real time, it makes quick and accurate work. Just ensure to make the cut with the fence riding against the straight edge. Move the clamp over to the other side and repeat the process. Now both sides are cut and ready for install. I mentioned earlier stringers are not perfectly straight. Cutting at 33 and a half inches gave me an extra quarter inch of room here as we needed five inches for the width of the front of the pallet and half five and a quarter inches. Do a test fit. The side looks great. The top needs trimmed a bit to make it flush and I will show you on the other side how to do this. Make sure the side is square with the front and then screw in three two inch screws. Adding the side of the bar made it super sturdy. The other side was roughly a quarter inch too tall and I trimmed it down with a circular saw. Make multiple passes if needed until it's flush, ensuring not to take too much off at once. This fit perfect. Square it up the same as the other side and install three two inch screws on this side as well. The front and sides are complete and it's time to work on the top and shelves for the inside of the bar. I grabbed a third pallet and air hammer using another technique for the stubborn deck boards attached to the middle stringers. I found this was a lot less labor intensive and more efficient than the 2x4s and hammering by hand to create the gaps. Since the bottom of the boards will never be seen it doesn't matter if there are some small marks and the air hammer makes quick work out of it. I was more than content with the gap, 
as this gave plenty of access for the reciprocating saw to cleanly and quickly remove the boards. I still use the same process for removing the boards from each end stringer. Now instead of struggling with the middle stringers, using the air hammer to create the gap saved a ton of time. This is enough lumber to complete the top of the bar, all the shelves, and to have plenty of extra for our future project. Before starting on the top of the bar, I ensured the ends were square. Do a test fit using scrap pieces on the sides to get an ideal layout and then make a cut mark for the front. Mark and use a square to cut the first board. Clamp the second board together and cut the second board at the same length. An 18 gauge brad neller is used to secure the bar top. I made a mark in the middle at two and a half inches as the width of the front is five inches and then allowed enough room for the six inch board to fit on each end. Align the board with the middle marks on each end and secure it with brad nails. I centered it up like this to fit two six inch boards for a 12 inch top to allow for plenty of room. The sides were cut at 38 and a half inches. Both sides were secured with brad nails as well. Cutting at this length allowed for the two and a half inch overhang on the front to be consistent. To finish off the bar, shelves were needed. I repurposed pieces, measured, cut to size, and secured with brad nails for the small shelves on the sides. For the long shelf, I trimmed up one end to allow it to fit inside the bar and added a 6 inch 2x4 securing it down with 2 inch screws on the top and bottom. It fit perfect and to attach it to the front of the bar I will screw in 2 inch screws on the back side of the deck board into these 2x4s. With it being a tight fit, this right angle drill attachment is super handy. I added a 2 inch screw on each end, screwing them in at an angle. If mounting this permanently, I would install one more screw on each side, securing the long shelf to each short one on the side. I really appreciate you watching. If you like this video, I have another one queued up for you in the corner that you'd probably like as well. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like, comment, share, and hit that notification bell so you can get notified when I release new videos.